contract Ooh, years. Bingo. Guys, wow. give that guy a cigar. Out on contract Players. years. Bertuzzi is what? Stone Cold Killer. Stone Cold Killer. Stone Cold There's going to be a six foot eight guy <laughs> who's a rookie who's going to be busting people upside head. Get out of my way. You guys want to talk hockey? Damn it, we'll talk some hockey. The debut of a new segment. We're calling it the five on three. Five hockey questions. Three guys that give answers. It's the five on three. A two For man sure. advantage. Spence, fire it up. Start of the two man advantage. We got Sam Flannel in the penalty box. But first question of the five on three. These are all Red Wings focused. Who will finish this season with more wins as a starter? Nedeljkovic or Huso? Uh, for me, I'm going with Vinny Huso. Vinny Huso? Um, yeah, Vinny. My cousin Vinny. Um, we call him Vinny. Yeah, you know, from now on, he's Vinny. Yeah. Uh, I'm, just, I'm not a huge Ned guy, man. I'm just not. Just and, and look, I know that defensively they were bad. I understand that. I gather that. But I, I've seen Huso do it. I saw him do it last year for St. Louis, who was in a playoff push, who, who, who was in the mix. I've watched it. So, you know, I, I shade towards Huso in this one. I, I think Huso is going to get, uh, I'm going to say, 82 games. Probably it's going to be 50, 32. Like, it'll be close. Like, they'll push each other. But I got to tend to agree with you that uh, what's Billy Huso? 35 wins? Like, 30 wins? You know, like, if this team. He's shown us. Like, he, he has. Sure and, I, and I think that's why we're still waiting for Ned. But here's the beauty of having two guys that could be your number one is they got to push each other and the best part too is because they got somebody looking over their shoulder and Sebastian Kosa who's only going to get better and better so I'll go Huso Delkovich has shown us greatness at times and he's shown us garbage so I can't I, I D, T T I can't get that out of my mind. Like some of the soft goals that he gave oh up my last God. year. Yeah, they're awful. And I don't care how bad your defense is, those were soft goals. Right. So um that's the thing. You know, I I wanna say Nadelkovic, but because of those soft goals and sometimes he just has awful nights. You can't get rid of that because that's who you are. Yeah, but, I can't get uh, out of my head. I either. think he's got maybe a higher upside during games. But not on a consistent basis. So, well, he's a, he he's gonna make. The, you're gonna see him on Highlight Sports Center. He's uh, the you know rodeo goaltender. He's gonna make that unbelievable save. But he's also, you know, gonna be out of position. So who shows? I think he's gonna. A stat, you need that defense, right? We got to start with the goals against and stuff like this. So I looked at Billy Huso to establish that. Yep. Uh, people talking about two Utes in the uh, in the chat thread too. So I, I always. Uh, I always uh, support that. Number two. For sure. Second question of the five on three. Who will finish with more goals this season? Lucas Raymond or Tyler Bertuzzi? Remember, Bertuzzi can play in Canada this year. Yeah, and I, I know what the snap reaction is going to be. Because for whatever reason, Bertuzzi gets shade, dude. Mm -hmm. He does. And I don't know if it was the vaccine thing. I mean, I suspect that's what it was. It's got to be. It's got to be. But remember this. And this was my big thing with Saquon Barkley when we talked about football this year. Contract Ooh, years. Bingo. Wow. Guys, Give that guy a ball cigar. out on contract Players years. Players ball out They in just do. Years. They absolutely do. And I think, I think Bertuzzi, you can book 30-plus. I mean, book it. A push in 40. It ain't, it ain't the vaccine that's going to keep him from playing games, right? If he stays health, if he stays healthy, I think he's, you know, got got 30 in the tank. And I, I'm going to go Bertuzzi, too. I'm going to forget the contract. I'm going Bertuzzi because he's a stone-cold killer. Stone-cold killer! That's what he is. Yes. Uh, Lucas Raymond is a dude that just does a lot of different things. He can mix it up. He can pass. He, can do, he has a better skill set. But that skill set is set up for him to do different things on the ice. So he may not be thinking scoring. He might be thinking back checking or, 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 or messing with somebody uh, on the other team or passing. So he has a more diverse game. But Bertuzzi is what? Stone Cold Killer. Stone Cold Killer. Stone Cold What about this, though? And I'll throw a little caveat well, in there. I don't want to hear it. Having Lucas <laughs> Raymond. <laughs> having Lucas Raymond. Yes. Will give you the ability to, if the if the if the poker pot gets a little too rich for your blood with Bertuzzi, 
you can fold the hand and move on because you have Lucas Raymond. So well, they are intertwined to some degree. And it's not just Lucas Raymond. You have different abilities. Different avenues. The lineup. You know, I mean, it's it's looking at the lineup and, and, and going through what the practice lines are and stuff like this is they talent that can I, sit out. And, so here, and here's, here's another backup, DMAC. I think people are sleeping on Lucas Raymond a little bit in this town. I, I am very intrigued with Lucas Raymond. Very intrigued. Well, it's it's intriguing because you can tell the Larkin, Bertuzzi, Raymond um, experiment last year works. Yeah. Right. And they they like playing together. You yeah. watch the interviews, and it's like that's the whole thing is Bert helps Raymond to go. They help each other out. You know, Dylan leading stuff like this. So it should be exciting line. That should be the Wings. You know, most offensive productive line continuing from last year. For sure. Yeah. Lucas Raymond was number six on my Detroit. Uh, Athlete power rankings. Yeah, Just Pe- people sleep on him. I feel. I th- like. Yeah, I like him a lot. Next question in the five on three. So we we know first line set. Those guys are studs. We know what they're going to do. Second line with the additions that Stevie Y brought in with Verona being healthy. Set. Everybody stays healthy. What does that third line shake out to being by the end of the year? I uh, for me in terms of an intrigue because the paradigm shifts now with Zadina for me. Mm-hmm. Because now, at 1.8 million per, now I raise my eyebrow, DMAC, and say, okay, you, as you told me when this all went down, when I questioned it to start, you said, hey, 1919, see something in them. That's why, that's why, and it's a fair contract. I, I, certainly, I think it's a fair contract. He sees something in him. So now I come to the other side on it and say, there is a whole lot of upside involved with Zadina now as a third line guy as a, as a guy to where I don't want to call him a reclamation project but he's kind of a reclamation project so for me it if they if they are going to go to where we think they can go more importantly where we hope they can go as a team this Red Wings team then you're going to see Zadina in the high teens and goals on the third line because this is how it shifts DMAC we know the first line guys we know the second line guys that's not how you are a good team in the NHL. You are a good team based on what your third line does. Is that is that a fair statement? Right. So Survey if, the landscape. So if I give you the third line that it looks like they're going to start the season with, right, and if this line stays together, right, which means t- because you'll see why it's Rasmussen, center and Soderblom, and Sunquist. The, the size. That's a bruiser speed. line. Now, now, what I mean, if that line stays together as they go and they build, which means the young kid has adjusted, but the fact of being... So, so Zadina's out in your mind then? Zadina's extra forward right now yeah. with okay. these suitors. Yeah. So Zadina, to your point, has to earn his ice time. But that could be Zadina's role if they... The, like. Zadina's value up and down the lineup at, at what he's getting paid is perfect. But it's also, too, he's got to earn his spot. What I'm looking at is, to your point about that third line, if you have that size with that skating ability and the fact that they figure out a way where Soderblom is adjusted and stuff like this, this could that could be... Like size wise, yeah. you got a six nine, a six six seven, six four guy and stuff like this, both all guys that can play. So, um, yeah, but to your point about Zadina, he could be there and he could be productive. And and it just, what I've showed you, Dylan Larkin said it today. Mike Gentry just put out a tweet on Woodward Sports Network that pretty much, and I'm going to, Cole's note is pretty much saying, yeah, on paper, we're a lot more talented, but now we got to go out and play and prove it. So mm-hmm. that comes together about how do they come together. So I, I'm intrigued by the third line to start the season with. The longer they play together, I think the better success that this team has. I don't know what the third line is going to look like, but I can tell you this: there's going to be a six foot eight guy <laughs> who's a rookie who's going to be busting people upside head. Get out of my way! And as he as he grows as a skater, he's going to be have a huge impact on that third line. Hey, and and T. Foss, to piggyback on your point there, I want some goals. Like, can we score from the third line? Can we get some third line production? Eventually, like consistent. Consistent third line production because Eventually. that's how you get to the playoffs in the NHL. I'm True. sorry, man. That, I don't care what the names are. Score goals. They're, they're, and you nailed it. So all these guys fighting for that ice time, like a Zadina, like a Suter, stuff like this. Yeah, 
produce. Let's go. And while you're at it, win a face-off. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. And it's almost like where you look at the extra guys, you always look at the extra guys that fill in on the fourth line. No, the extra guys are like second and third line guys. You know what I'm saying? Where it's almost like the first and fourth line where you got the Ernie's, you know, out there and stuff like this um, to be that grinding style. Because of the minutes, you watch Soderblom playing third line, so he's playing 12 to 15 minutes a game. Right? Like you said, give him the opportunity. What he showed in the exhibition, what he showed prospects so far, if he learns to use that size, we see the way he can take it off the wall and score NHL-type goals, you're going to get your goals. Good Win news, a, fellas. Win a face-off. The third line of the Wings will probably be the second line four years ago. Yeah. So the fact that they are the third line means depth, means good news. Now, what I want to see and what I used to see with the Wings is a fourth line. They, you know, they could throw that out now and then. Yeah. Just win so. a face-off. We start there. We right. know, they used to win sure. face-offs all the time. I know. Well, yeah, they don't when we, anymore. When we had Draper and Hank and Pavel, mm. we would win every face-off. But next up, us, dude, I just I can't wrap my mind around that. That line D Mac put out there, Rasmussen, uh, Sunquist, and Solderblum, that would just be scary. But fourth question of the five on three How much of a difference will Perron make on the power play this year? Uh, you know, what, what, I, what I like about him is what, what he does, just even last year with St. Louis D Mac. A viable, consistent goal score on the power. Get double digits in power play goals last year. It's, it's, that's that's the other thing, right? And this this kind of dovetails into my complaints about the faceoff. Somebody asked me in the in the chat, "Why are you yelling?" Because they never win faceoffs last year, and you and you could almost predict when a goal was going to happen. When when they would drop the puck, they never won the faceoff. And you're like, "Well, here we go. Colorado's going to score a goal here," and they did. And they did, but you know, just talking about Perron, veteran, proven power play producer. That's that's another thing that good teams have. Uh, I believe maybe we scored 32 power play goals last year. Yeah, well, he had 11 last year. What I'm saying is that you can up that to that. You look what is the impact that he's going to have is to make the 45 to 50 goals, right? So at least a plus 10. Right, and that impact, not only that from quarterback and, and, and from scoring, but also produce, like creating. So I think they're at least plus over 10. I expect 45 to 50 at least. Man, like a real games. NHL team. All right. Here's what's going to happen. Perron is going to be playing out there and doing his thing. And he's going to say, man, these boys don't know how to score power play goals. <laughs> it's time for me to take over. So that's what he's going to do. And you know what, the T, to that point, that's yes, because David Perron has that alpha attitude like right. that, right? That's what they need in that locker room. What you don't see adding on the stat sheet and whatever else is what he means in that locker room. He is the guy that's gonna say, "Hey, get your heads out of your butts. Let's yeah, go." But for the first couple weeks or whatever, he might say, "Let me be one of the guys," and blah blah blah. I think he's then, beyond. Then he's gonna say, "Wait a minute, what the hell am I doing?" See, Tia, usually that's over. the way it is. I think it's been fast forward. I think it's, that's it's what training camp. I think that training camp and and everything else, like that's the attitude, like where you see it's like there's no touching your toe into the water for the season and stuff like this. It's let's go right out the gate, and I think that's the message from their from Steve Eiserman to their coach on down is we got to hit the hit the ground running, hit the ice skating, whatever like this. Because here's the thing: what do I always say? can't win the division early, but you sure can shoot yourself in the foot and lose it if you don't have a good first couple months. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Number five. Final question of the five on three. If healthy, if everything, if he plays the whole season, will Jacob Brown score over 35 goals this season? I, I gotta see it, man. Like, I can't. Like, if you're asking me to bet it, I, I, I don't think I would pull the trigger on that. 35 goals is a lot. It's man. a lot. It's, it's a lot. Of, it's almost a goal every other game. Almost. What did he play? 35 games last year? Yes. Did he have 21? He did. If he's healthy, he's got 40. Not, then I, you got to let it play out. Dog. Everything can't work. Done. That see, and that's, and see, you know, team. Something's got to fall. <laughs> and I, and here's your fall. You want to hear your fall? You want a hot Sam, you want a hot Sam flannel take? Your, fa- your fall, your setback that worry about is your guy, Raymond. 
Verona, no. He's had a freaking year and a half off. He's got something to, something to prove to be that guy. Now, he is a little bit more temperamental, I will say that, you know, into that scoring. If anybody's like your Fedorov, it's your Verona on this team. So in saying that, I also mean that with the offensive ability. Healthy, 40. Goal scorer, talent, done. Is he, is he the one power play line? Is he what? He, he's not. He's not the number one power play line, right? I don't, I, dude. Whoever, it doesn't matter. One or two, whoever's producing. It doesn't work. You, ones go all the time. No, you no, I know, I know. Like there, there is mix and matches to it. But does he have to be get, on the first if line? If you're a goal scorer, to get the opportunity. Thirty-five. Yeah, I think but so. Does Second he have to be on the first line to no, get the thirty-five. Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. I'm not hounding him as a power play. This guy finds. This guy has the ability to, to, to pop a breakaway again. Yeah. As, as of right now, first power play is Burt, Larks, Razor, Perron, yeah. and Sider. Second power play is Elmer, Kopp, Verona, Hronik, Kubelik. So those are two pretty dangerous power plays. Absolutely. Hey, absolutely.